There's a new shipping business sailing Guam's way, American President Lines. Company executives were here to announce a new service between Guam, Saipan, and Yokohama, Japan, starting in November. APL actually operated here for many years before its local business was bought out by Matson in 1996. Eric Mensing is the president and CEO of APL Maritime. They made us an offer we couldn't refuse. Uh, they wanted our U.S. built ships and so we sold the service but interesting we actually stayed together in a joint operation for quite a while after that where they owned the Guam space and we operated the ships and then we uh, moved the cargo from Asia. Mensing says a lot has happened since the mid-90s and when another shipper, Horizon Lines, pulled anchor here, APL saw an opportunity to return. We've been watching the situation and we saw an opening. We, we've noted the growth in Guam. We've, we've noticed some key decisions that are going to increase growth in certain areas. And we felt the timing was right, so we're uh, really excited to be back. Mensing says APL does a lot of business with the U.S. military, and so it's no coincidence that the upcoming Marine relocation to Guam is one of the reasons the shipper is back. We do know that the military is going to increase its presence in Guam. We also see the opportunity for an expanded scope of uh, commercial business. The vessel routing means Guam and Saipan shippers will be able to connect with APL's U.S. flagged ships out of Japan, giving them access to service from the U.S. mainland. The Japan connection also allows customers access to a global network. So APL, in addition to offering service from the United States, we're a worldwide carrier with 80 different services. So we're interested in working with the customers in Guam and the shippers to look at cargo from Europe, from Australia, throughout Asia, Latin America. We're going to be able to provide service from all those locations into Guam. The bi-weekly service, dubbed the Guam Saipan Express, or GSX, has a dedicated vessel that can carry the equivalent of 1,120-foot containers. General Manager for Guam John Selleck says the vessel will arrive on weekends, which gives customers more flexibility for the week ahead. And there's more. One of the things that we're going to be able to provide is redundancy in the supply chain. We're going to be hubbing our ship um, from Yokohama down to Guam and Saipan and our ship will be self-sustaining. So an event of you know, natural disaster, as they just had in Saipan, where, say, the port cranes are down or there's lack of power, our ship will be able to offload and load on its own power. So we've got dry containers, we've got refrigerated containers with uh, controlled atmospheres for the uh, fresh fruits and vegetables that want to come in from places like the Philippines, places like China. Um, we've also got flat racks and open tops for odd-sized cargo. And the ship we're bringing in here is quite large. It's uh, 1,100 uh, TEUs, so we're going to have a lot of capacity to really move as much cargo as people want to give us. Guam imports virtually everything it consumes. How much a new shipping company will impact consumer prices remains to be seen. APL declined to discuss rates, but says it intends to be competitive. It also says it won't hesitate to expand service if the demand is there. There appears to be quite a bit of interest uh, to support our business. There's a great desire for competition, uh, particularly from the states. And if that support is there, and if we can fill the ships, uh, we'll put on a second ship, absolutely. We also met with the governor and lieutenant governor who were just fantastic and and uh, we're, we're really excited to have an increase in service and additional competition on the island. APL's origins date back more than 160 years to 1848, according to its website, and its first regular Trans-Pacific service was in 1867, also through Yokohama and to Hong Kong. APL merged with Singapore-based global shipping giant Neptune Orient Lines in 1997, soon after it sold its Guam operation. Now it's back and optimistic about the prospects for its second go-round here. Growing economy, uh, tourism is booming, construction is coming back. It, um, you know, the build-up has been long anticipated and it's, it's finally here with the record of decision and I think there's just going to be a lot of positivity in, you know, in Guam's economy and we're happy to be here and be part of it and help with that growth. For KUAM's Business Matters, I'm Nestor Leconto.